Hello and welcome to the second channel for Tales from the Trip. I'm your host, Tripkeeper, and on today's video, we are going to be doing Frightening Trip Reports to Fall Asleep to, Volume 4. Um, yeah, great series, guys. Uh, we're going to keep doing this. Um, I got a couple stories here. I got a couple of seven stories, uh, although some of them are pretty short, but there are a couple that are long. Um, you know, it's, it's fun to do this because at least I have a set thing I'm going to talk about, what I'm going to read. And it's fun to get these, you know, get these out of the way and we can read them and I'm, you know, you guys can experience your trip report being read on my channel. Um, even though it's not on the main one, at least I did read it, you know. Um, but yeah, um, hope you guys enjoyed the, the top five sexiest black women video that I made last night. Great video. Um, you know, did you guys agree with that list? Hey, you gotta watch it if you haven't. All right. Uh, so, without, you know, saying anything else, let's just get right into this fucking shit. Got my beer. If you can guess what it is in the comments, I will heart your comment, because you guys know what it is. Alright, this one is by Redacted011. Spiders, well, Butrin, plus Prozac, plus Vyvanse, plus Adderall, plus Lamictal. Repost. So, this was posted before. Hopefully I don't read it again at some point. I don't think I will if it, this is a very, you know, standout title. First off, never ever do this. And if you do, you have my warning. Second, if you don't know what Wellbutrin is, it's an antidepressant that's a norepinephrine and dopamine reuptake inhibitor, NDRI, and in high doses. It could be similar to cocaine or PCP. Uh, closer to, um just not doing that in general don't take a high dose of wellbutrin don't ever do that not not a fun drug it's literally not fun at all i just gotten discharged from a mental hospital for suicidal thoughts but even before that i found a bag that that had my old medication in it from years back and i set it in a drawer in my desk in my room this is important for later Fast forward, I did my research and found out that while butrin in high doses could be similar to PCP, I had no experience similar to PCP. All I only had, all, all I only had experience with vaping and snorting Ritalin, uh, nicotine. I opened the bag to find two bottles full of Wellbutrin and a bottle of Adderall. I decided to take some. I had already also I had also already taken the medicine I was prescribed: Prozac, Vyvanse, Lamictal. By the end, I snorted f you snorted five pills. By the end, I snorted five pills of Wellbutrin, 500 milligrams, and took 47 pills orally of Wellbutrin, and six pills of Adderall. Um, yeah, Jesus Christ. Um. 47 pills what the fuck so they're 100 milligrams each damn 47 bro. i mean no offense but I'm, that's fucked up man i went back and laid down listening to my music when i saw armies of spiders crawling on my computer and an overwhelming body load where i could barely stand I asked my mom who had just got home from work if she saw the spiders, and she said no and asked me what I took, and I told her. She called an ambulance. Smart by your mom. When I went outside, and even though it was daytime, listen to my voice right now, oh my god. For me, it was nighttime with the crimson colored moon, and I was carried into the ambulance. When I looked up, I saw what looked like three demon-like creatures, which were paramedics who stuck these wires to me, but in my head, they stuck the wires into my skin. I was strapped in and I couldn't move. Then I blacked out. When I woke, I was on a cot and I looked back and I saw the armies of spiders again. <clears throat> Excuse me. But this time, my environment looked like a cartoon. My drug test showed that I, had that I had taken MDMA, ecstasy, which I didn't, and to this day, I still don't know how it got into my system. Maybe that much of Wellbutrin does that, I don't fucking know. It mixed with the Adderall, I mean, there's some amphetamines, and, um, what, is Wellbutrin an SSRI, uh, or is it an SNRI, or is it none of those? Um, 
I blacked out for a while. When I woke, I looked back and saw a gr and saw a graveyard full of these creatures with eyes all over their body, front and back, and they were chasing me. And I wake up again in the hospital bed. This is a common theme. I looked down at the IV in my arm, and it looked like there was a hole in it. I freaked out and started messing with it until the nurses stopped me. I wonder what that looked like. I was in the ER for three entire days before being admitted to a mental hospital again, and I had diarrhea, constipation, and migraines from hell for weeks. I'll never touch this drug again after what it did to me, and I don't even know how I didn't have a seizure. At least the doctor said I didn't. Now, if you still want to try this, be careful, and don't take as much as me. It's been a year later. I got into DXM, and, I got into DXM and shit, went to rehab, and I am better now. Yeah, that was just a story of do not do that, please. Um, 47 pills. I mean, you shouldn't take 47 of anything, really, unless it's happiness. 47 of happiness. Um, but yeah, uh, don't do that. I could tell, uh, you know, this is, this shit is just so real, by the way. It was typed and everything. Um, yeah, 47 is outrageous. I don't know what the overdose level is on Wellbutrin. What is it? Wellbutrin overdose um, dosage. Um, do it, do it, do 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 yeah, we know they're dangerous, but what's... All right, it comes in... Well, oh yeah, I know, 450 milligrams. Why does it come in 348 milligrams? That's a weird, weird one. Um, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't say it here, but I have a feeling... Wait, this one says fatal right here, this person. Um, it's a rare occurrence. Oh my God! Bro, listen to this. We report a case of a 26-year-old man who ingested 23 grams of bupropion, developed seizures and hypoxia, presented in cardiac arrest. The patient was resuscitated in the emergency department, but died four days after supportive intensive care. Oh my jeez. That's insanity. That is insanity. 23 fucking grams. So four grams is nothing compared to that. Oh my god. This one's in a small child. What does this one say? Uninten unintentional ingestion of bupropion. It's like reading that fast is, is, is hard because it's the P's and the R's and uh, is, yeah. Bupropion in young children has generally resulted in limited toxicity. We report a case of pediatric bupropion bupropion ingestion resulting in multiple seizures. The patient experienced hallucinations, agitation, vomiting, tachycardia, and seizures after ingestion of 1,050 milligrams? Or it just says 1,050 of extended release bupropion. Are you fucking kidding me? Bupropion. The potential for severe toxicity in the setting of pediatric overdose should be recognized. So I don't know how much they took. It's at 48 milligrams per kilogram. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It doesn't say like there's the 1050, the 10 hundred, 1050 milligrams or cause that's really not a lot compared to everything else here, but it's definitely not a thousand fifty fucking pills that, that would just be outrageous for a kid. Um, that's, that's not possible. How would you even get your hands on that many? You'd have to save them all up and pretend like you, you've you been doing them to get them from your psychiatrist. But you have to save up. You, you probably get like a 30 month or six, or not 30 month, 30 day or 60 day supply. So yeah, that would take years um, to do that. That's crazy. Ugh. All right. This one's the long, longest story that I chose for this video, um, but I'm going to be right back. I have to do something really quickly. All right, I am back. That took longer than I wanted, but you guys wouldn't even know because I came back right away in less than a second. So let's just get back on to these trip reports. 
All right, this next one is by Ill East 8798 a DXM one, My Descent Into Hell with DXM. All right, before I start, you should know this experience spanned over all of last year and into this year, but my perception of time was so completely fucked by my drug usage that it felt like maybe a month. And one more thing, I knew nothing about drugs and never even drank alcohol before, so yeah. The thing that sparked this was a simple power outage. I was a lazy fuck, still am, and sat in my room on my PC 24-7. Plus I was unemployed at the time, meaning all I did was sleep or use my computer. So of course, a power outage spanning 3 days completely ruined my regular schedule, and after a full day of laying in the dark on my bed and only having one more charge left on my backup phone battery, I figured I'd at least find something else to pass the time for a while to preserve my phone's battery. After looking around the house a while, not seeing anything of interest, I went to use the bathroom and took, and took a look in our medicine cabinet while I was there. I pretty quickly took note of a bottle of Delsum, as it displayed, the parents, learn more about teen medicine abuse, label on the box, so I swiped it as I returned to my room. Oh, those labels. I didn't know I didn't know exactly how this could be abused, so I went to Reddit and searched for a drug community, and then searched Delsum on it. Upon my searching, I realized I hit the jackpot. Delsum was the exact cough syrup everyone was using to get high as I could see. At that moment I got excited, read some trip reports, and went down that rabbit hole, then down what was probably three fourths of a Delsum bottle. And for, unfortunately for me, due to being fat, this only produced a mood boost and nothing else after a few hours, and the day ended in disappointment. I figured maybe it didn't work on me for some reason, and dropped it when the power came on the next morning. But I didn't drop it for long. A couple days later, I was scrolling on my phone again and came across the information I could buy pills which were two times as potent as the Delsum off Amazon. My excitement came back and I instantly added three bottles to my cart, nine grams of DXM in total, ordering them alongside a bag of chips so they'd come in a cardboard box as to not alert my parents that I bought a type of pill. Once I placed the order, I spent the rest of the time leading up to its delivery reading up on DXM and deciding go, I'd go for a high third plateau dose of around 750 milligrams for my first trip. I'd say that was a mistake, but honestly, it was pretty tame. It went something like this. My package arrived and my parents were out for the day. Perfect, I thought. I'd already not eaten the entire day in preparation, so without hesitation, I went ahead and downed my planned dose of 750 milligrams, laid down in bed, and awaited something happening, um, which after an hour and a little nausea, it did. Honestly, the details here are a little fuzzy, but one moment I was laying in bed feeling it coming on, and the next moment I awoke from having blacked out, wildly smiling at my closed door, everything in my room looking oversaturated and super bright. All I could think was, wow, this really worked. This did something. What the fuck is happening? Why can't I move? Wow, I am high. I have no clue how long that lasted, but I blacked out again, and my next memory is of sitting in my bed still, uttering out loud, not again, and hearing those words echo in my mind as I involuntarily moved my hands over my eyes and felt them folding over my entire being infinitely, which made me go which made me go from a feeling of awe to a feeling of terror for reasons unknown, as I just saw and felt my hands all around my existence, folding over and over it. I don't know how I could describe that, but I was terrified, and for some reason, I felt like this had happened so many times before, despite that not being the case. Alright, good story so far. Interested to see what happens? How much longer? Oh boy, yeah, this is a long one. Uh, where was I? Okay. I don't remember much from my first trip after that. Eventually I came down and rode the afterglow the next day, managing to shift the vibe of the whole trip back to a positive one. In fact, I ended up liking the whole experience after the fact so much that I decided that, that I wanted to do a fourth plateau trip as soon as possible. So only a couple days after my first trip, I went for a 900 milligram trip, disregarding all, all advice to wait a week per plat, per plateau, or anything else like that. 
After taking the 900 milligrams, I for some reason felt that it wasn't going to be enough and took four more pills, upping my dose to just over a gram for, for my second time. That was a huge mistake. This trip quickly took a turn for the worse. I never like turn for the worst or turn for the worse. It's either way, I guess, but I think it's worse. I think they got it right. First, my music started to gain this creepy or just wrong vibe to it. It just sounded wrong near the end of every song. Like they became a little scary and faded out in a high pitch before the actual end of the song, which was unsettling to me in that moment. The music was now scaring me instead of bringing enjoyment, but for some reason I couldn't turn it off either. I then felt this intense nausea, but fought it for a while until ultimately stumbling over to my trash can and attempting to aim my vomit into it, which failed, but at the time I didn't even notice and threw myself back into the bed, eventually blacking out. When I regained my consciousness, this is when I truly became scared for the first time, as in major internal panic. I came to with absolutely no memory of who or what I was, where I was, what anything was. I felt, I, I felt like I was in an infinite space. I don't know why I was there and I didn't understand why I existed at that moment. I felt like I was trapped and had existed in this cold, dark, empty void for eternity. I was nothing. I, I was nothing, but I was the only thing. This was existence. I was existence. The word human popped into my mind. I was the human. I had to exist as the human. Why? I don't know. It terrified me. I was panicking, freaking the fuck out internally that this was truly all of existence, and it always had been. I just didn't remember for some reason. I couldn't move. I didn't have a physical form. I just had to exist because I was the human. That went on in a loop for who knows how long. I had never been more terrified in my entire life. When I finally came down, however, the fear washed away, and by the morning, I wanted more. I'd say after that, I mean, you just never want to do it again, but hey, we're all different. I managed to wait a single day before going on another trip, this time just second plateau, and that was fun. So of course, I ordered four more bottles of Robocough and prepared for some more tripping. I began tripping whenever I wanted, so like every few nights, and had no ill effects. I gained a view that using DXM at low doses actually fixed my brain and became convinced that this was a miracle cure to all my mental issues. Man, it's that fucking placebo. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, it's not gonna hurt to do it once in a while, but doing it this often, yeah, that's a problem. The next thing I remember is redosing for three days straight and entering my first psychosis. I don't know how much I took, but I combined like four bottles into one and was keeping it on my desk, so there's nothing stopping me from just eating them whenever I fe felt like I should. I became convinced that I could easily get better drugs off the dark net and began accessing those sites, making accounts on crypto markets, stuff like that. In my mind this made sense and I figured my parents would understand or just not notice. Before I could actually load money or anything into that stuff though, I became paranoid suddenly that this would land me in jail for life, and then erased all of my efforts towards that, then repeated this entire cycle like twice, spending my days setting up and then deleting files and accounts. I went to bed then and woke up feeling like it was 120 degrees in my room, sweating all over, then getting cold flashes and going back to being hot as shit. I still wasn't thinking rationally, and I figured a day off of DXM would fix this issue, so I just faked being sick and slept for the day to dodge going out with my parents that night, and plan to dose tomorrow night because the day would be plenty, en plenty of enough break after my redosing binge, right? Oh, I have a feeling that's not right, yeah. Well, I didn't get the chance because that day I was called in for an interview my parents made me apply for, being fed up with my unemployment. Of course, I figured I might as well take the 300 milligrams of DXM for this interview and drove there high, got the job high, came home high, thus sparked my second bout of psychosis. Once I had the job, I decided that it was fair if I took 10 robo tabs before work every morning, as that would make it more bearable. Yeah, once you start taking shit at work, you're gonna feel like you wanna keep doing it to just fucking go to work every day. Uh, and began driving to work and working high in DXM every day I had a shift. Of course, one thing I forgot about was creep 
One thing I forgot about was creeping in, tolerance. My dosage began to rise, 12 tabs for work, then 13, then 15, then 16. I was now taking 480 milligrams of DXM before work every day, driving on it, being in public on it, and deeply convincing myself that this was getting my life on track. I mean, I had a job now, and it was all thanks to DXM, right? No, not right. Now I could afford to keep buying more and more DXM. It was perfect. I loved it. Okay, water too. I became dissatisfied with my highs. I wanted to experience what I had before on a gram, and on a day off, I went ahead and took at least 1.1 grams, redosing a couple times throughout my trip. This trip became the worst one of all. The come up was uneventful. I don't remember most of it, but eventually, eventually, as I peaked, I became convinced that I was in hell. My room took on a sinister and dark tone. I couldn't move at all, and all I could think about was that I was actually in hell. I realized that hell was just a personalized torment, and that this evil, evil version of my room was my own hell. That there wasn't, that there wasn't going to be an escape this time. Hell was real, and now I was there. The panic I experienced is honestly indescribable. I can't put that shit into words. I became full of regret and sorrow that I ended up in this awful place. It felt like it was never ending. I laid there for so long, even as I was coming down I remained convinced and horrified. Genuinely freaking the fuck out for however long this lasted. Once I could finally move again, a new realization came to me, that not only was I in hell, but I felt so bad that it felt like I was dying, so that meant I also had to relive my death. Either that or just experience the utter disgusting feeling of being dead forever now, that I had moved on to an even more torturous phase of hell. My body felt so awful, it was like that pins and needles feeling, but all over and amplified by a million times. Moving felt like teleporting. This was worse than any version of death I have ever believed in. I had ever believed in. I couldn't handle an eternity of dying or whatever the fuck this was. Next thing I know, I'm drinking every liquid in my fridge, convinced this would somehow bring me back to my life and save me. Once I ran out of water, I moved on to a yellow version of wa- Oh god. Once I ran out of water, I moved on to a yellow version of water, if you know what I mean. It didn't register to me what it was, and my taste buds did not exist. So yeah, just an extra layer of nastiness. That is pretty fucking nasty. But eventually I fully came down and realized that none of that actually happened. It was just the drug. Relief. Well, not really. I didn't stop the dose before work thing, and before I knew it, on a closing shift one night, I took 23 robotabs throughout an hour, recreating the hell I'd experienced before, but this time at work. I work at a store and it was empty, my manager being busy, so I was standing alone on the main floor as the entire store took on the hellish evil feeling that my room had the last time. I was able to refrain from freaking out as I wasn't on too high of a dose this time, only like 700 milligrams, which is fucking crazy that 700 milligrams wasn't that high anymore. That was my first dose that incapacitated me originally. I'm realizing that as I write this. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's fucked up, bro. I had an hour to work in this mindset. I could barely not slur my words to the few customers that came in during it. Luckily not needing nearly any interaction, but overall I still believed I had been transported to hell. I was scared as fuck. Getting caught high wasn't my main concern. I was afraid I actually got transported into hell, and that I was trapped there this time, and that the entire world and that the entire world was this hell. Sorry. I stumbled around the store for a while, mostly trying to stand in one place to avoid any suspicion, and eventually got to drive home. I remember screaming out random bullshit for the entire drive, and I believe I went over at least 100 miles per hour during some parts of it, but due to where I lived, the odds of a policeman were, were to be out is extremely low, so I was free to drive home in this state, which I somehow did. You'd think that after all these hor horrible trips, I'd eventually stop, but nah. I just moved up to taking 540 milligrams of DXM Monday through Friday, every morning before work. 
I became so used to functioning like this and had a strong tolerance that I never got caught being high. I just kind of existed in the store for my shifts, checking out customers and pretending I was doing other work between that. I still believed that these doses were helping me and the big scary ones were different. That, and I believed that everyone else online was wrong and just taking the weekends off DXM was enough to keep a healthy balance. I can't tell you how long this lasted or when it started. These days just blended together. I don't know anything else that was going on. I don't remember. It got to a point I was scaring myself while just driving. Like I drive a part of the road and forget that I even drove it yet, confused how I reached my destination already. Most things went like that for a while. My entire life at that point was just waiting for when I could dose DXM again. I was texting random people I hadn't talked to in years, trying to get on their good side because I became convinced that if I did, they'd start sending me money. I had so many random delusions that who knows what real life was anymore. I certainly didn't. The only thing that got me to temporarily stop was because I wanted to get on Vyvanse, but knew I couldn't get prescribed stuff like that if my blood pressure was high, as they gave me a non-stimulant the first time due to it being too high. So I had my first sober week in who knows how long, then went back to the day I got my prescription, though managing to slowly taper it down a little bit this time, and finally, actually stopping. That brings me to now, I've just came down off a of two small delsum that I bought in Impulse and drank on my drive home, plus some or robo tabs I ordered last week. I'm mainly writing this to show myself why I stopped and that this relapse doesn't need to reignite this ad addiction. I don't want to die due to cough medicine. I really hope that I can bring myself to flush this bottle of Robotabs this time. And yeah, let's just say that I have 100% taken the DXM and my prescription together a few times as well. I urge you to never, ever, ever abuse DXM. Do not trip more than once a month. I seriously wish I had it. Who knows how this will affect my health down the line. There's like no research on this drug in terms of that. Oh well. Ooh, what'd you guys think of that story? That was definitely a roller coaster ride. Thank you for submitting that. Um, yeah, you definitely descended into hell. I mean, not just once, but a couple times. When you get to that point where you end up doing 540 milligrams, I think you said, just, oh my God, every day before work. Like, doing it at work is the crazy part. Like, I mean, you could survive off like a, maybe a couple, but like doing that much is just insanity. Um, but yeah, fucking robo tabs. They they know what they're doing, and they're still selling it. People like this are totally getting screwed over by it. Even though you know it's not robo tabs fault, they're selling something that people are buying because it's their choice. They can do whatever they want, but it's not helping either. Um, but yeah, DXM can definitely be scary, and that was actually probably one of the craziest ones I've ever read. I just do so many DXM stories, um, and there's. Uh, you know, they just don't get as many views as my normal videos do. Um, so, you know, I'll probably be reading most of them on here now. Maybe once in a while I'll do DXM on the main channel. But, yeah. All right, I'll be right back again. My stomach hurts. I'm going to try to do something to fix it. Well, I tried to take a poopy and nothing came out. And I'll just have to suffer with this. But, um, oh, hopefully it doesn't get worse than what it already is. Uh, let's just read these stories. Um. Maybe I won't read every single one. I mean, there's some in here that are really short that I might not even do it, but... Uh, excuse me again. Yeah, I probably won't read the Salvia story. It's like fucking a couple sentences. Maybe they'll be easy, but... All right, this one is called Met the Devil on Amphetamines and Benadryl by Original Selection 50. And the topic of this video is definitely amphetamines and what you shouldn't do. Um, I was 16 at the time and took a lot of drugs. I would take anything I could find. Weed, Adderall, DXM, Xanax, etc. I remember waking up one morning before school and feeling real shitty. I would never really sleep at most. Um, never really sleep at mo- oh, I would never really sleep. At most, I would get like 5 hours if I was lucky. So I always felt tired and would just take random shit and sleep during class. Anyway, I found three Adderall pills in my room that my friend gave me and took them right before I left. Usually I would take downers like Xanax, but I wanted to get work done today, so I took a bunch of Adderall, and later I'd find out this was the worst mistake of my life. 
During my first period, everything started out normal, but then I started to notice my hands were shaking. But that wasn't too concerning because it didn't feel too bad, and I didn't think anyone could notice until my friend, I'll call Jay for privacy reasons, texting me asking me if I was okay, and I said, yeah, why? And she said, you look really sweaty and like you're having a panic attack or something. After she said that, I told her I took a couple Addies before school, and she started to sound panicked and asked how much, and asked how much. I said three. Jay then told me they were 30 milligrams each, and she knew this because they were her mom's and she gave them to me. Anyway, I started to get stressed because I didn't want people to think I was a tweaker, so I asked Jay if there was anything she had to calm me down, and she said she had some weed, so I smoked a little in the bathroom. Little did I know, it only gets worse after this. Yeah, no, weed, when you're already fucking 90 milligrams of Adderall, yeah, no, not good. Ozzy's using the litter box, by the way. After I smoked some weed, Jay and me went to our third period class. I had English, and Jay felt like everyone was, and, well, they said Jay with the letter J, and I felt like everyone was staring at me, and not just staring at me, but looking at me with the most serious RBF face, like I just committed a serious crime or something. I got really uncomfortable and scared thinking everyone knew, so I just sat there drawing circles and other random shit the whole period. I was so tense my muscles were hurting, and I was just praying the class was over soon. Finally, after English, Ozzy, come on. Finally, after English, I got to go home because I got a release period. So I went home and I just remember rearranging my room and just hanging random shit on the walls. My mom and dad were at work all day, so I didn't worry about them being home and noticing that I was off. But when my mom got home, she immediately noticed I was shaking and my room was different and my room, my whole room was different. There was random trash and stuff everywhere and just blankets, posters, and even a towel I hung up. And she asked what was wrong and what I took, but I just denied it and told her I was super bored, which she definitely didn't believe. But at this point, I was so far gone and just did so many drugs she gave up. After pacing around and cleaning out random stuff in my room, I noticed it was getting super late, but I wasn't tired at all. Usually I would get some sleep, so this freaked me out, but being on the dose I was, I was super manic and would do anything just to go to sleep. I was trying to sleep half the night, but could not stop moving, so I searched my whole room for anything to help, but couldn't find much, so I looked in my medicine cabinet downstairs and found Benadryl. I remembered that Benadryl can make you high if you take a lot, but I didn't realize at the time that a Benadryl high was pure hell, so I took half the bottle, went back up in my room, and just waited. About an hour or so later, I remember waking up and seeing a huge spider that was yellow and clear right above me. I freaked out and jumped out of bed, um, bed and saw another one appear right by it, and now, they're, now they were both crawling towards me super fast. After this, I don't remember much, but my mom told me what happened. I was screaming that there were bugs and spiders everywhere, and we all need to evacuate. My mom told me that I was slurring so much and mumbling, though you could barely understand me. My mom, absolutely terrified, not knowing what I took and if I would die, just told me to stay in her room and lay by her and my dad, so I did. I remember hearing my mom's voice, but from outside the room, telling me to come outside, and kept going out and asking what she wanted, but she then told me to just stay in the room and not to listen to anyone else. This really freaked me out because I genuinely didn't know what voice was my mom and which one wasn't. It was a long night for me, and my parents, my mom, and me and my parents, you, you need to add periods, please. <laughs> Periods and commas really help while reading. Uh, my mom was up all night dealing with me, screaming and running around the house all night. That morning, I went back to my room and tried to get to sleep. But after a while, I looked over and saw a man in a suit who was very, very dark, almost like a shadow, but not quite. He had red eyes and had the most evil grin I've ever seen. If you, ever, if you have ever seen the movie Smile or seen the cover of it, he had the exact smile and he just sat there staring. I was petrified because it looked so real, I thought I was in hell. There were so many cockroaches everywhere and bugs. I screamed and cried for my mom to save me. My mom came in my room crying asking if I was smoking meth. I told her I wasn't and that I took half the bottle of Benadryl and she said okay. And after that I fell asleep and wasn't seeing anything. But for months I would question if some bugs I saw were real or not and still sometimes do. 
I will never forget what I experienced and saw. I never believed in hell or evil, but now I know it exists and I will be forever thankful for my mom. I don't think there is a better ways to I don't think there I don't think there was a better way to handle it. Don't ever take a bunch of Benadryl. Trust me, it's not fun. Well, that's good advice at the end, but also do not take uh, just mixing amphetamines and uh, Benadryl too. Like that, that made it a lot worse. Um, yeah, don't do that because um, you were sleep deprived at that point, basically, um, or getting close to it and then mixing with delirients, antihistamines. Yeah, no, that's not a good idea. I got three different drinks now. I got my energy drink, my beer, and my water. <laughs> I got some choices. I'm gonna drink all three. I'm trying to do a fucking whatever combo this is. Uh, but no, that was a good story. But like I said, when you guys write these, um, just try to format it correctly. Um, yeah, it just can get really annoying at times when you gotta read and then um, you know you you don't know you're done with the sentence. Like you just. You don't put a comma or a period and it just goes on to the next sentence even though there was nothing to show that it was going on. It was just go straight to the next sentence. Like, yeah, just got to fix that. Um, all right. We're on to our fourth story and we are 35 minutes and 59 seconds in. Now 36 minutes. Oh, boy. I got into a major car crash from selling acid. This is by Dark Illuminati Ski. I was a young druggie. I was 16 at the time, messing up as younger, and I was on compliance, a lower form of probation. I remember the night before, I I bought the last for my guy. He texted me about buying it at 2 a.m. I told him to come by and drop it off. As I was only 16, I didn't want my parents to to find out. I told him to go down the store and I'll go there and do the deal. It was done and then I went home. Posted it to my friends trying to sell some. The next day comes around and I go to school. I decide in the middle of school to drop a tab. I realized right as I take it, it was LSI, not LSD. What's LSI? Is that a thing? Um, well, whatever. I don't know what LSI is, but... Uh, I did not care though, honestly. I got a deal on it and I was mainly going to sell it. My one friend hit me up asking if I had all of it still. I told him no, I took one, but that's it. He said he has a girl who wants the rest. I confirmed after school we were going to meet up with the girl. During school, I got into an argument with the teacher. As I was tripping sack and talking to everyone in the room, the teacher yelled so loud at me to be quiet, and then the bell rang. That is all I remember from before the car crash, really. Later on during the day after the deal, we were driving back and the driver was a little drunk. All of us in the car was messed up. Then we didn't stop or we stopping and the driver didn't look. Yeah, I don't know. We got rear-ended from the left side. We were all in the hospital except one person in our car who saw all of us almost dead. He freaked out and was wondering what to do. As cops were called and came to rescue us, I went into a coma. A lot of people say when things like this happen, they have a second chance and they see otherworldly things. And in afterlife, in afterlife in a way, I only bring this up because I almost died several times in the hospital, but I don't remember anything or have gained anything from this event. It scares me that in death there will be nothing. I've thought about it though for years, reading blogs, watching interviews, and I've realized that, uh, that what we all think happens to us once we die, uh, that is what happens. Once the car crash happened, I was an atheist, and that's why I believe I saw nothing. Now I don't believe in God. I don't believe in Buddha. I believe and am accepting of everyone because from the car crash experience, I feel closer to them all in a way. Uh, yeah, that story was all over the place, but you get the point. Um, glad you're okay, I guess. Share your story. Um, yeah, someone said, what the hell is LSI? And someone said, I think he's referring to 25i. Okay, yeah, so N-bomb. Makes sense. Um, I was wondering if there's like a different chemical I haven't heard of. Like LSI, is that something new? But yeah, all right. 
upvote that, seven upvotes. All right, we'll read the Salvia story since it's so short. All right, my first time with Salvia by Practical Pianist 250. I was alone at my friend's house because he had work at the time and I had nothing to do, but remembered him mentioning a potent drug that I never heard about. He didn't tell me what it was until afterwards. The first part of it, I found it hard to move hard to move much and my mouth was dry but he didn't want to get up from where I was sitting. A little bit afterwards my perception of time was really fucked and I felt like my body was like a thin plastic film like a ziploc bag and it felt like someone was ripping me in half over and over and over. It was probably the worst pain I have ever felt and didn't know what to do because nobody was home at the time. I got up shortly after try and find tape to possibly fix myself in some sort of way. When my friend came home, I was in the bathroom throwing up with the rolls worth of tape scattered around my body. Hey, short, but very interesting. Good story. If I feel like if you expanded that though, that could have been a pretty, pretty good story as well. Just like making a longer one, but hey, we got what we got. Ozzy, God, he's running around and doing this crap. Uh, all right, this next one is a mushroom one. Seeing my guardian angel on mushrooms by Mimarino Fappuccino. All right, don't know if I can trust this, but we'll see. Hello, everyone. Today I'll be talking about the day that I took 12 grams of mushrooms and went through the most crazy and unexpected journey of my life. It was January. This year I was 19 and I had nothing to do all day and had some spare cash. I decided to hit up the local street plug for some mushrooms as I usually do. I would get mushrooms every two and a half weeks. I do about four to five grams or take a whole mushroom chocolate bar and trip balls in my room at night. But this day, I would got a half an ounce of mushrooms expecting them to last me a great while, maybe two months or so. I would gotten a text from my friend, let's call her Allie, and she wanted to ask if I wanted to hang with her and her friends, so of course I said yes and packed up my bong and all my weed essentials, got dressed and waited for her to get me. Another, another, you know, one where the grammar is just completely off. I'm just saying this because it's just it really hard to read when you're reading it like this, and if I'm trying to like focus on reading, yeah, it's just very, very difficult to just do it on the spot. Um, see, I don't even know where I'm at now. She picks me up and we wait a while for my plug because I had told a I had told Allie about getting the half ounce of shrooms. The plug gets there and I get them. We pull off into a liquor store and ask some homeless dude to get us some twisted teas. We got a 12 pack and went to a park and immediately we started smashing teas. Disclaimer, I recommend not drinking and shrooming as it could have very intense effects. I agree with that statement that happened to me. My worst shroom trip ever. Go watch it. I then took around 7 grams of mushrooms at one time and washed it down with another twisted tea. After about an hour they kick in hard as shit and I start to see mild visuals at the dark park and then it just became a wonderland. It was colorful and there were lots of lights and rainbows. It seriously felt like I was in My Little Pony as I was in my own, I was in my own world tripping absolute balls. I was catching clouds and smoking vape flavors I've never heard of in my entire life. I remember a little elf dude running up to me and giving me a vape with the flavor raspberry rainbow days and it was the best tasting thing ever. According to Ali, I was just wandering around the park laughing and running around on the play structure. After about 30 minutes, Allie and her friends went to smoke up, so I roll up a doobie and we all start puffing. Rolling a doob off 7 grams and seeing what I'm seeing was surreal and felt like the joint was rolling itself. After smoking, Allie and her friends wanted to change spots and get snacks, which ended up giving me a bad panic attack for some reason, which had never happened before. I'm really experienced on mushrooms, so, that, so what was the logical thing to do in this situation? Take another 5 grams and total out to 12 grams. Very smart decision. After that, I slammed another twisted T, racking the count up to 4 twees. Is that what they call them? All, or, is your, or did you mean to write T's? Because twees makes sense too, twisted T's, but I don't know if that, that's probably a thing if you wrote that. But I don't know if you uh, autocorrect or not. Allie was blasting music and her friend Bianca was dancing in the front and I was in the back seat as everything started to change. The car turned into a flaming death mobile and the heavy metal music turned into sinister screaming and in my head I was screaming and yelling crying to get out of there but to my friends I was just lying still in the car just looking motionless. 
We get to 7-Eleven for snacks and I open the car door only to see a never ending abyss right outside it and I was terrified to set, set foot out there. Would I fall into the unknown or am I just tripping way too hard right now? Either way, I jumped out and, then, and ended up smacking a force field blocking the abyss. Uh, excuse me. And after that, I ran into 7-Eleven. It was like a Rick and Morty episode with hell mixed into it. The 7-Eleven looked like a hellish sci-fi store with skulls and blood and screaming, crying baby music. My friends went to get snacks and I constantly started and I constantly started staring at Benadryl thinking, this would make the trip even crazier and it'll last longer than a whole day. I went to pocket it and steal it, but something greater came over me and I ran back into the car not even caring about the abyss. After Allie got back in the car, I asked to go home because I was starting to get freaked out. Oh, by the way, there was a constant sh there was there were constant shadow beings and demons with sharp pointy white teeth and red eyes following me whenever I ended up in the dark. The light was the only safe place. After I'd got home, my house felt like a horror game. It was dark and there was dripping noises, and for some reason my house was extended almost bigger. I cautiously ran upstairs to my room where I thought it was safe, but no, this is where the real torture begins. I turn on my computer and check the time. It's around 12.45 AM and I'm hoping to invest myself in some sort of rabbit hole on YouTube to get my head out of this dark place. I get on YouTube and as I'm, and as I'm scrolling through videos, I start to see these weird thumbnails of these demons with weird texts under them. I got a weird sense that something was in my room with me and I stared over into the corner noticing something odd. There was a misty black smoke that looked super real and I asked if anyone was there. Right as I asked that question, staring back at me is a death note look as a death note looking demon staring back at me with bl dark black eyes and green pupils. I wasn't scared, I was just confused and startled. I asked this demon who it was and if it would hurt me, and he just looked at me blankly. There was no expression in his face, just a blank big tooth demon that was staring back at me. I then asked him, will you go away, and immediately after I asked that, he nodded his head and disappeared, leaving a black smoke behind him. I was absolutely shocked at what I had just seen and what I just saw, and thousands of thoughts ran through my head. Was that Satan? Was that a dead relative? Was that me in the future? Was that my cat in another universe? So many thoughts, so many theories, and then I came to the conclusion, and it stuck with me that it might have been my guardian angel looking after me, and I wasn't supposed to see him. Maybe the amount of mushrooms and alcohol I consumed took part in why I was able to see him sitting there making sure I was okay. No, I'm not religious, but I seriously do believe that what I saw was my guardian angel. How do I explain the rainbow land and hell I went through with my friends? I don't know how mushrooms do that to you and make you see these odd things, but what I do know is never again will I take an amount that high. A little high, yes, very high. Um, especially mixing it with the alcohol, that's no good. Honestly, it was probably the hat man, to be honest. Did he say he did the Benadryl? Because if he did, that makes sense. Um... Yo, I just gotta reply. What the fuck is this shit? <laughs> Some people are still finding out I, I just got back. That's funny. All right, we're almost done here. We got two more stories. Uh, how far are we in? Oh boy, we're gonna maybe reach an hour long. That'd be crazy. Uh, wait, how do we pronounce this again? Eth Ethosuximide, I think. Ethosuximide. Okay, ethosuximide. Uncommon drug, ethosuximide, anti-epileptic. This is by Obscure Mist. That's a pretty cool username. How'd you get that? Um, at a young age, I was diagnosed with epilepsy. I was always told my drug, ethosuximide. Wait, is that what I said? <laughs> I already forgot. Yeah, okay. Ethosuximide, a calcium channel blocker, was a benign drug on the body. This is something I believed as it's something I have taken for 15 years with little to no side effects besides maybe increasing my teenage angst and depressive tendencies. I take 500 milligrams twice a day, now in adulthood. All was fine until one evening. I was going to the city to meet friends. 
I don't think I've taken my evening dose yet. Or have I? I'm not too sure. At the same time, I had drank 6-7% beers the previous night, so I was hungover. Yeah, that's a lot. Being, hung being hungover, I believe, plays a huge role in amplifying the negative or uncomfortable effects of this drug. I took my evening dose, same as usual, 500 milligrams. At least so I thought. I live, I've lived more of my life on ethosuximide. I, well, I keep, every time it comes up, I keep forgetting. Ethosuximide than, than off of it. So I know when it hits and when it plateaus. For me, ethosuximide hits it, hit, hits its full strength 30 to 50 minutes after consumption. Tonight, however, was different. I, it had been nearly 90 minutes and I hadn't, I hadn't felt my usual mild numbing feelings from the drug. I, was, I felt completely normal upon walking onto the subway platform when my eyes began to play tricks on me. I was staring at the concrete wall, which I knew was concrete, but appeared as if it had bugs climbing all over it. The wall also appeared soft, as if it were made out of foam. This visual worked on all objects, making everything look as if it were foam. Okay, okay. This particular platform I had been to many times, so it was at this moment. So it was at this moment I knew I had mistakenly double dosed. Everything moved slowly, as if I was drunk and tripping at the same time. The visuals were soft and appeared nearly fragrant, but in my body. I felt panic and unrest. By the time my train arrived, I was in a full-blown panic attack. My heart was beating out of my chest, strangers looking at me with concern across the aisle. I knew I needed to walk and get out of there. After walking, I began to finally come down and relax, feeling like myself again. It had been four hours since my dosage at this point, and I felt so lucky to not have admitted myself to the hospital, and I felt lucky to have known what was going on. Ethosuximide is a drug that has kept me seizure-free since diagnosis, but don't you ever underestimate it or take it recreationally. It is not the benign drug I was promised by any means, and that night remains horrifying to me. Yeah, I, I love reading stories like these where it's like ones you never even heard of before. Like, I never heard of that until this story, so... If you got obscure drugs like that and you had a trip report, always upload it, dude, because I'm always interested in it. I just love the stuff that no one's no one's ever talked about, no one, you know, not too many videos on. That's why I try to, you know, I try to expand my range. I'm not trying to just do psychedelics. I know it's Tales from the Trip, but really life is a trip and you take these pills and stuff or whatever it is huffing gasoline whatever the fuck you're doing you're going to be going on a trip no matter what yeah even if it's not bad uh and especially if it's bad but yeah so just i'm always interested in these kind of obscure drugs and i'm mostly interested in like antidepressants and antipsychotics like those are my favorite stories to read because it's just like people are prescribed these and you're not supposed to abuse it and they don't but like something happens where they go through a withdrawal or they start to get su 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 i'm not trying to say i was almost said the full thing su 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 tendencies and thoughts that um yeah you just start freaking out you end up in a mental ward or something like those are the best stories even though they're they're sad that people experience them they're just like the best best to read best for people because it's better to learn about that than it is, you know, we already know acid is just, you gotta be careful with it, you know, that anything could happen on it, but mostly you'll be fine. It's the other mundane stuff that you get prescribe without question, then something happens to you, like, that's what I like to, what I like to read about. I think that's the best. But also inhalants, Benadryl, great. Salvia is always great stories. I haven't read one bad Salvia story. All right. This next one is the last one, um, epinephrine overuse. Another one, that uh, asthma inhaler. Like, this is, you know, what, what are we doing here, you know? I, I love it. Uh, this is by Neon Witch Merlin. This happened a few years ago while I was evacuating wildfires in Oregon in 2020. I went east no further than Arizona. The smoke worsened my asthma and the dry air of the desert only made things even more hellish. Uh, excuse me again, dude. I burped so many times. 
I did not have any kind of insurance, and my parents were this weird kind that never trusted doctors, so I only got to share my dad's asthma meds sometimes when I, while I lived at home. So during the evac, the evac trip, or should I say evacuation? Evacuation trip, the only things that could help my breathing were DPH and an over-the-counter inhaler. Primatine mist, primatine mist, or primatine mist, whatever. The active ingredient was epinephrine. I had some hard heart issues since I was a child, so epinephrine was not my first choice, but it was my only option. I bought two inhalers. By the time my girlfriend re reached the Las Vegas desert, my lungs were giving up. I started taking more than the recommended dose of the epinephrine inhaler, despite my tendency to faint and seize. It's some kind of heart issue. I take beta blockers for now. At the time, it was just an annoyance between me and free breathing. Taking this inhaler feels pretty good at first, which makes sense because it is epinephrine. This increases your heart rate and just makes you feel weird and more alive. I took two hits every half hour for wheezing. It began to make my mouth sore, so I cleaned out the acidic taste with ginger ale. I kept coughing, but it wasn't the thin, useless, but it wasn't the thin, useless coughs. I was getting phlegm up. Ooh. Nasty. The sounds kept my girlfriend awake though, so I went to sleep in the bathtub with the fan running. Yo, man, you are a G. G for your girlfriend. Alright. Primatine. I'm gonna see how you pronounce this. I wanna be right about it. Primatine mist. Do you think there'll be pronunciations on here? Uh, this one, I don't... I try not to use this website, but primatine mist. Primatine mist. Okay, so it's primatine. For I don't know for sure if it's primatine, but we're gonna just gonna go with it. I kept taking hits of the primatine mist and scrolling through YouTube. After about ten minutes, the easy breathing effect would wear off, so I kept taking it. I finished one inhaler and opened a new one. The sore acidic effect in my mouth was very painful at this point, but I needed to breathe breathe deep so bad that I didn't care. The colors in my eyes were sharp and bright, and I shut my eyes as much as I could. It was like an overuse of stims or something, really uncomfortable, but I couldn't stop breathing it in. I needed to breathe so badly. I started to bang my head against the bathtub wall because of the pain. Overuse of epi can cause really intense headaches. I was crying and writhing and trying to escape it while knowing I would have to redose soon just to keep my lungs functional. The steam of the shower wasn't enough, wasn't enough to repair the damage the smoke in the desert air had done. I couldn't afford a hospital and had no insurance. My only option seemed to be the epi inhaler. I hated it and loved it. It isn't exactly like a trip, but at the same time, in a weird way, it is. I went through vivid, colorful dreamscapes in the hellish cycle of epinephrine. I felt heavy, hot hallucinations, and paralysis. If I overuse the epi epi inhaler these days, I get the same effect. I feel like I am spinning, going ever higher and higher, and then hit a painful stratos stratosphere blockage. Doctors have told me to stop using it, and the FDA may soon revoke its approval as an OTC medication. However, getting medical help in the USA is so difficult that I hope they don't remove it from the shelves. You should never ever overuse epinephrine, but it is a very useful thing for emergencies. Yeah, it just goes to show you that anything can really fuck you up, dude. It's it's crazy. Um, but yeah, that was Frightening Trip Reports Volume 4. How many stories was that? Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh my god, we read eight stories, bro. Oh my god, bro. Yeah, that was crazy. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, we're going to do Volume 5 soon enough again. It's just going to keep on going. Maybe I'll start using uh, Eroid, Eroid, uh trip reports but you know there's so many on my reddit community also if you want to submit a story just go to my reddit community that's where i'm reading these stories from um but yeah if you're asleep by now congratulations you succeeded you put on this you put on this video for a reason and you did it you are the best person in the world and um i hope you're having sweet dreams about patsy klein um she actually died at a really young age really sad but um I might visit her hometown. I also want to visit Loretta Lynn's hometown. It's in Kentucky, uh, Butcher Hollow. But she says, Butcher Holler. I need to see Coal Miner's Daughter, too. That looks like a good movie. The song is just incredible. 
so yeah um but all right i'm actually gonna do this a little bit under an hour of over 59 minutes um but yeah this is exciting we are gonna end this in three two one